good morning everyone and welcome to the last study session we have workshops in the afternoon also but today is the last study session and the two subjects or other three subjects mostly two subjects that we will cover basically uh karma dharma and thought power because karma and dharma are very closely interlinked and of course along with thought power so we'll try to have some uh study about them because all these things are so deep because about karma it is said that until and unless a person becomes adept they cannot understand karma fully because it is working at so many le levels there are so many intricacies so many complexities connections interconnections and uh, things i mean uh, possibilities that until and unless the person has reached that stage it is not able to see it as a whole the working of it so but whatever we can we will try because at from one aspect it is very complex but at the same time at our level of study it is also very simple it is complex only if we see the world in fragmentations different separate entities then how can they affect each other but on the other hand it is very simple if we see this whole existence as one organism one life and everybody is interconnected everybody is affecting each other either at the individual level or at the universal level so if we want to study the basic uh, law of karma also we have to have some concept of this interconnectedness otherwise as you can see in the picture uh we think that we sent one energy in this direction and then after a while the energy comes from this direction and we are not able to correlate we think they are two completely different things that i hurt somebody else but then somebody else came in my life and hurt me so how is it possible or i mean are they correlated or not so all these things we will try to study but basically what does the word karma mean normally the word karma means action in uh, sanskrit or deed but also in the philosophy and the religion it is like a short expression for law of karma law of cause and effect so instead of saying law of cause and effect law of karma the famous and the word is has become famous just saying karma but actually the word karma only means action or deed when we say law of karma then the law which has or which controls coordinates the causes and effects is the law and it has been given various names in various uh, literatures law of retribution law of mercy law of harmony law of compensation and uh, maybe some other names also in the same light what does dharma mean because dharma the word dharma has its root in the sanskrit root dhru means to hold or which is firm and firm that is established that is a law so the word dharma has several meanings like in our uh, theosophical seal also there is no religion higher than truth the motto actually the sanskrit phrase is satyan nasti paro dharma so at the time of translation that dharma was translated as religion but uh, dharma is not only religion it is so many more things but maybe at that point they thought that okay this is the most appropriate translation uh, so maybe religion was the cause of so much separation so let's use the word dhar religion in place of dharma but dharma as religion is one of the meanings but other meaning as we just discussed is the law so because also in that way it is related to religion because all religions tell us what 
the basic laws like the Ten Commandments or how to live your life, what are the do's, what are the don'ts. So that we get from the religion. So in that way, religion is also giving us some of the laws. Another meaning of dharma is where it is very closely uh, sorry, related to one's duty. Karma is the action, is closely ties to dharma or one's duty or righteousness. And fulfilling one's dharma generates good karma. Now this is a very uh, close interrelation. Based on our dharma, based on our sense of duty, we act. Like I am a student, so it is my duty to study. I am a doctor, so it's my duty to treat the patient without asking if the patient is a criminal, if a patient is the saint, if a patient is rich, if a patient is poor. And when I do that, I am following my dharma and that itself generates good karma. When, do, when we do our duty that we are supposed to do, that itself is a positive force in the positive direction. Also, the word dharma in the same relation, the duty, the duty, the sense of duty also changes with our level of evolution. Like if I am at the level of evolution at which uh, I don't mind uh, killing other animals to make a fur coat or for my fashion. I mean there is so much fashion clothes and accessories which are made by killing so many animals for furs, snake skin and rhinosaurus, uh, all those things, elephants, tusks, so much things are happening in the world. At one point, maybe it's completely okay for me to do all those things. But when I have grown in the, my consciousness, in the evolution, that becomes a no-go area for me. Then comes even a next step. Then I may not even hurt the plants in that sense, like I'm just walking some, like it's a tendency, you know, we are just passing by and some low hanging branches there and we just put our hands and take out the leaves carelessly. So at next level of evolution, I will not even do that because I know that even plants have life. At next level of evolution maybe, when I am walking, I will be careful about the ants, about if I am not stepping on any insects due to my carelessness and we know the monks who uh, they, there is a four year duration in the year that monks do not move that is the duration of this rainy season because they say that during the rainy season a lot of these small small insects creatures are everywhere so if you do also you know inevitably you will kill uh, a lot of them so they stay only at one place minimizing the movement and passing that period. So again, this sense of inner, the, the inner nature depend on each man the stage of development and unfolding. For me maybe it is okay to speak little bit of lie at my level of evolution. But maybe for somebody at higher level of evolution not even 1% of lie is acceptable, no matter how big harm or how big loss it brings. So again, each person as his or her own level of evolution have their dharma. And that's what Krishna was telling Arjuna, that you are a warrior. Your whole duty is to fight against a dharma. And now you are caught up in your emotions, in your attachments, depressed that, oh, this is my uncle, this is my teacher, this is my cousins, and how can I fight them? So my personal attachments are overcoming my sense of duty. So the whole Bhagavad Gita is told to Arjuna 
to dispel that cloud of depression. That's why he is saying fight, do your duty. And this is a very famous uh, Sanskrit statement, those who have read, Dharmo Rakshati Rakshita. It means Dharma protects the protector. Means the one who protects the Dharma, Dharma protects that person. But how is it uh, possible that we as individuals can protect the dharma. The best way to protect the dharma is to follow the dharma. That's how you are keeping the dharma alive. When it is said, be truthful. So, keeping that law alive for futures, in every act of mine, I have to be truthful. And if I am not being truthful, then I am not protecting the dharma. Same thing, but what people have uh, maybe misunderstood, that protecting the dharma means protect Christianity, protect Islam, protect Hinduism, protect uh, the, uh, you know, the, organ the structure, the outer structure, not the inner uh, teachings of the religion, which are only to be uh, protected when we follow. And all religions tell to forgive do to unto others what you want to be done to you and still the largest bloodshed in the history of humanity that has happened has happened in the name of religion what a irony because all religions tell you know be yeah i mean love everyone and everything so related to this i suddenly a thought came to my mind how does law protects the protector I think everyone knows this. <laughs> we know this instance in the movie. Huh? Yes. Yeah. No? Okay. This is one of the, uh, the chronicles of Narnia. The Aslan is the king, the lion who speaks in human language, who is the king of that uh, kingdom of Narnia and there is a witch who is the kind of negative power and who wants to overcome the whole kingdom, take over the whole kingdom, make everyone her slave. So she creates some situation in which one of the princes was to be blamed and to be sacrificed, I mean punished by dying. What he did, the king, he said, okay. I am willing to sacrifice myself if you let go the prince. Uh, the prince name was uh, Edm Edmund or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know what is the facts of the movie, but I, that's what I got from the net. So that's what he said. Because he knew, now here in the movie it is said due to a deeper magic. But actually magic is also what? The laws of nature, the laws of nature which we do not know yet, we call it magic. If somebody does something and manifests something, we call it magic. But that person knows the science of it. What is the science behind materialization, the willpower and everything? So he knew that when a willing victim who had committed no treachery was killed in a traitor's stead, the table, the table would crack and death itself would start working backward. So he protected the dharma by sacrificing himself like a non-willing uh, victim who has committed no treachery. But how could he do that? Because what if he had a doubt in mind that, oh, whether is it really true? Will it happen? Will I, will I come back to life or not? Am I <laughs> sacrificing? But he had trust in law and trust in law brings obedience of law. And that also sometimes may be the reason that why we do not trust karma fully. Because 
we see things happening in parts like we see that uh, the you know the relations between the principles and the events that are happening and we see them in fragments and we draw conclusion that this is not right this is right he is guilty he is not guilty like yesterday we were talking about hitler or somebody so we don't know what is happening behind the scenes or any such entity what i mean what is the purpose nature is trying to solve similarly we have a very deeply ingrained conception that material gains and happiness are synonymous in our mind subconsciously maybe we think if a person is successful if a person is rich if a person is popular and powerful and everything that no matter how he or she is getting there he or she is happy and we often see that such things are got people receive such things by doing such some you know breaking the law and doing things under the table and all those things so we say oh my god that that person is so much like this and he or she is getting so much successful so much rich but what we do not realize that not necessarily a rich person is a happy person maybe rich person especially if he has got the money from illegal means he is always having in the back of the mind when the next income tax raid will be happening or when the police will be coming or you know how to hide my money in the sofas in the beds and what not so that kind of subconscious fear anxiety is all the time there similarly the evolutionary process if we do not know how it happens we will uh, we do not trust karma also when we trust karma it's actually taking the responsibility of our life in our own hands then we cannot blame anyone else for what is happening to me because i am responsible for whatever is happening to me and also one very important reason is desire of immediate result for any act done and that is also one of the things we see we think i did good but you know i didn't get good in return because we want immediate reactions immediate response from the nature but nature also along with some okay immediate results but normally a lot of things in nature are organic and they take time to grow ripen and then give the fruit if we put the seed today of mango we cannot just pluck mangoes tomorrow it has to grow the tree has to grow big and then the mangoes have to come proper rains proper sunlight and everything and then we will receive the fruits and that is what there are two kinds of karma one is immediate and one is delayed not delayed in the sense from our point of view it is coming in, in its own time but for us it looks not immediate so whatever action we do to others whether good or bad there is an immediate synchronous reaction within us the moment i thought of taking revenge with somebody i have already created negative vibrations in my bodies so that's immediate loss to me i have immediately filled my bodies with anger irritation jealousy or any such kind of uh, vibrations so that's the immediate effect on me and what cw leadbeater points out that such of the there are many of our actions to which there are some mini immediate consequences and what those mini consequences are that sometimes you know we are in a we have to reach somewhere urgently but we are caught up in a traffic or we are in the bank we are going to for some work we are 6th or 7th in the line the moment we come to the counter the counter closes because it's lunch time so the person says you know come after half an hour or one hour or something like that or similarly can be any such uh, thing that give us discomfort or kind of irritation or frustration so all these are small small 
many immediate many consequences that that are the results of our earlier careless behavior of uh, towards somebody and the delayed one or when it's right we just saw this now how much time this will take will depend on the intensity of karma normally when this time comes right when the last uh, brick or whatever the piece of stone is falling by the time this person is already dead so it will come in the next life so there are consequences that we are receiving in this life for which there is no apparent reason that i have done or i have not done and the only re possible reason for that is that will come uh, soon but definitely maybe that is one of the reasons that why in the earlier part religions so much emphasis was given on hell or heaven and people really trusted that <laughs> okay it applied few days back when it was very hot so yeah that's a good motivation that you know for whatever reason i have to you know do something to my life because maybe in hell it is very hot and i cannot be at this hot heat uh, what about oh okay <laughs> okay at least we laughed so that is one of the uh, advantages of believing in hell 100% that if we want to avoid to go to hell the heat then uh, do let's do something about it and then also our uh, various unanswered doubts are there which uh, karma helps if we begin to understand and study like i think most of us must have gone through these questions at some point that if karma is there why do good people suffer so often i mean a person is good so he or she should get all the good things no in the life but uh, looks like they suffer more i would do much better if i were in his or her place oh that person gave a lecture i could have done much better than that person i could have done better if i were born in a different situation it's only because i was born in a village that you know i don't did not get enough opportunities if i was born in new york or paris or chennai or mumbai maybe i would have done something different with my life or singapore right <laughs> or okay i mean all the places of the <laughs> sorry no discrimination <laughs> whatever cities came to my mind i just said also i am better qualified than him or her and she still he she gets the better opportunities than me that happens a lot in the job like you know both there are two people three people at the same level and one gets the promotion but i do not get the promotion and i feel i am more talented i am more hard working and i am everything and that person doesn't even know half what i know and gets the promotion or that person became the minister who does not a sports minister who does not have never even played any sports right so why am i like i am this is a very important thing because we tend to accept who we are and in a sense of that we cannot do anything about it that this is my nature this is uh, my personality this is my uh, something but what we do not then we are not opening up to it is i who has created this personality and then it means it is i who can change also this personality so then there is no more question of any uh, labeling that i am this kind of person that i am a, a okay let's say i am a an angry person or i am a reserved person or i am this kind of person that anger i have built in my character over a period of time of lives and lives 
so only i can get rid of that anger nobody else can do that for me and why is there not one baseline for everyone why one person is born on the footpath on the road why one person is born in the palace why is one born which who is pampered so much from the childhood why one is thrown away to the orphanages or you know given to somebody or left alone so all these questions we do not get the answers if we only look from the point of view our of our what modern science says that this is who we are and this is the life that we have got and that's where the karma and reincarnation together gives us all these answers so law of karma as we know so there are two kinds of laws basically if we classify human made laws and natural laws so human made laws are so many laws uh, general would know maybe there are some more <laughs> types here that is administrative criminal civil and all those things and natural law, laws are the laws which govern matter energy and forces at macro and micro levels in whatever way but what is the difference between the two what is the let's say discuss some of the differences between man -made, human made laws and natural laws human made laws they are arbitrary i mean each somebody can make their own laws you know changeable they keep changing all the time local we have let's say in india it is left side driving traffic law in some other country there is right hand side driving and i mean similarly uh, if in singapore you go you do i think throw something you get fined or chewing gum, chewing gum yes <laughs> there is so much strict law about that but in some other place it, nobody cares so human made laws punishment only there is no law that if you help a old person on the road that you will be rewarded the human made law is only that if you do something like this you will be punished if you break this you will be punished and only as we were talking with sort of you will be punished only if the crime is discovered that also is the condition so if you get away with your crime no law can uh, you know catch you like that movie catch me if you can but the last, but, uh, the last yes <laughs> the last also human made laws applies only to physical but now you see there is also a change now there is a, a reach to a higher level also emotional level also i think jerrell also may uh, agree with this that even if somebody kills someone there are two types of situations one is a cold blooded planned thing and one is an impulse out of impulse the, the, the situation got so immediately impulse that the person just did that so there is a different punishment for both because the intention motive was not to do that but it happened but in the other situation it was well planned cold blooded and everything so physical and also little beyond it's also temporary i mean you know maybe again changeable it can be related to changeable and can be approximate means maybe somebody defrauded somebody of 10000 dollars or something but or stolen some articles from our home maybe we will not get everything back you know it's approximate judge, uh, justice and what happens in natural laws not arbitrary cannot be altered are universal there are consequences not punishment if you do good you will get good consequences if you do bad you will get bad consequences nothing can be hidden no matter how in how much loneliness we do something it is still uh, witnessed and recorded at all levels of existence physical astral mental spiritual everything will get appropriate consequences eternal accurate to the dot i mean there is no plus or minus 
I mean, whatever is the due as per the law, it will come back. And okay, Newton also says, though, equal and opposite uh, action, reaction, yeah. So now let's spend some time on what HPB says about law of karma. She says that it is the ultimate law of universe, the source, origin, and fount of all other laws which exist throughout nature. And here we find the answer, karma is the unerring law which adjusts effect to cause on the physical, mental and spiritual planes of being. Unerring. I mean, there is not even an error that instead of, you know, uh, happening to this person, it happened to some other person. Or it was about to happen X quantity, but it happened in Y quantity. And similarly, she even further goes and say, as no cause remains without its effect from greatest to least, cosmic disturbance down to the movement of your hand. Karma adjusts wisely, intelligently and equitably each effort to its cause, tracing the latter back to its producer. And who is the producer? in this case, in our case. Because when a person dies, there is a new personality. But the producer is actually that individuality who is on which the thread we saw, the three atoms were hanging. So only the atoms are remaining, but the individuality is all the time same. So that's why all the karma sanskaras, all our store of karmic record is at the causal body, higher mental plane from where everything can be seen and uh, what is to be expected in the next life or why this has happened to me if we have the consciousness of that level. And we can actually test it also sometimes. You take a bucket of water, you know, and when it's no movement, no ripples. And suppose if we put a small drop of water or a small pebble in it, what will happen? Yes. Ripples will be created. And what will happen? The Ripples will spread. Then what will happen? They will meet the bucket boundary and then what will happen? They will come back. What will happen? Where will they meet? They will meet at the point where, where you dropped the pebble. Even if you had not dropped the pebble uh, in the center, they will generate from that point and they will come back to that point. Okay, I mean, I have done many times, so, but maybe I don't know in <laughs> different situation, it may change. But uh, that is something that I could relate to that. Uh, so the source point which created the ripples the ripples come back to that point. Then she says, with right knowledge or at any rate with a confident conviction that our neighbors will no more work to hurt us than we would think of harming them, the two-thirds of world's evil would vanish into thin air. So, I mean, it's very obvious and clear, no point in uh, discussing it more. And then she says, we stand bewildered before the mystery of our own making and the riddles of life that we cannot solve. And then accuse the great sphinx of devouring us. Is sphinx everyone know? Uh, Egypt and then devouring us means eating us and we, oh God, why me? And But verily, uh, this is what Kostub asked yesterday. But verily, there is not an accident in our lives not a mishappen day or a misfortune that could not be traced back to our own doing in this or in another life. Even further we will come to those situations that accident happens or something. So I mean I, when I read these statements I feel like they are so strong that there is no point in doubting them. And the moment we feel it, the conviction, a lot of uh, Confidence, as she is saying, with right knowledge, uh, you know, uh, we will, quite a lot of things will change within us. 
and then she says karma is no more than the dynamical effect of causes produced and forces awakened into activity by our own actions it's as simple but till when it will keep happening it will keep happening till humans spiritual intentions intuitions are fully opened which will not happen before we fairly cast off our thick coats of matter until we begin acting from within instead of ever following impulses from without this response and react i added the words because i thought it is the reaction that we normally do something happens and we react immediately but response is you receive you ponder and then you respond receive respond so receive you ponder and then you give your reply so that is the difference between reaction and the response that you give some time up to our higher manas buddhi to give us some kind of you know solution or answer and then we reply to it then also those who believe in karma have to believe in destiny but not fatalism we'll come to that which from birth to death every man or human is weaving thread by thread around himself as a spider does its cobweb so just like a spider knits its spider web each and all of us is are weaving this uh, web which is will be the destiny of our future lives so the one that we are having today is actually woven by us previously but the very important phrase here is when the last strand is woven it means until the last strand is woven and it has become so concrete that it cannot be avoided till before that we can do something about it if we change our behavior our attitude and that is why she says that human is a free agent during his stay on earth means free as to create the causes and free as to face the consequences of those causes but once the causes are decided oh sorry not the causes the F, once the causes are created then there is no more choice in avoiding the effects because then those effects which are already ripened ready to fructify will fructify so it means if we see from this if karma is perfect justice then why should we help anyone right because it's our karma that we need then yes no they deserve the some help so that's why uh, we should help if they have come across in our life if somebody needs help because i have come across some people those who say i mean some uh, elder people uh, that you know that person is suffering due to let's say some reason and if you are helping the person you are interfering in the suffering or the law but then our understanding should be that if my help is not in that person's karma my help will not reach the person no matter suppose the person is uh, need food right i give the person food and if that food is not in that person's karma maybe a dog will come or something will happen and that food will spill and that food will go to waste maybe it will come to him or her later when it is really but at least i did a my duty of helping that is something good that person received it or not received it that's a different story but if the person is receiving help is able to receive help is allowed to receive help by nature it means that is also part of his karma this is interesting <laughs> but that is why we should study because you know there is a, a phrase in uh, hindi that neem hakim khatraye jaan like uh, little knowledge is dangerous partial knowledge is dangerous 
so we should try to get as whole knowledge as possible uh, otherwise these kind of uh, statements <laughs> we tend to hear so why study karma because it is very simple whatever i do i will get back but when this bigger principle we have to apply in our small small daily life events meeting with people with taxi person with shopkeepers and everything then how to apply them that for all those things we need to study if we study then what it will do it will remove our thought from again fortuitous concurrence of atoms that we have been studying that what the modern science or modern understanding of things say that it is everything is happening coincidentally it's coincident that something happens so no then it will move our thinking that nothing is coincidental everything is actually under a realm of law and more than that it places us our future under our own control in proportion to the amount of knowledge so the more deeper understanding we have of it the more empowered we become to create our future and at the same time the warning is given to understand law of karma is not to renounce activity but to know the conditions under which activity is best carried on so there can be one more humorous statement uh, i studied law of karma that's why i chose not to work because i am not working anything i am not creating any karma so nothing will happen to me but again that is little in for partial information because nobody can even sit without creating karma because we are even creating karma with our thoughts which we will come to later but basically understanding this law means the conditions under which we should do our action the best so a sincere student of life cannot remain satisfied with the generalities of any law he must study the subdivisions how it works here how it works there and how far it binds us and how far it makes us free to create the causes and to make the consequences and what we studied how to protect the law the conquest of and rule over nature can only be gained by obedience so if we follows the law of nature the nature becomes kind of you know nature it is said in voice of silence yeah that when you become obedient to laws of nature nature opens its secret chambers for you and then you know you know all the esoteric knowledge and what all things are there and finally hpb says that belief in karma is the highest reason for reconcilement to one's lot in this life and a very strongest sensitive incentive towards effort to better the succeeding rebirth yesterday we were thinking how to reconcile the inequalities in life and all those questions that we asked that why this why i am like this why the other person is like this so belief from our level and maybe when we grow more and our consciousness goes deeper the knowledge and realization of that belief how is karma implemented in nature i think this is very simple due to the fundamental law of unity or oneness of life because then it makes all of us as the agents of karma because it's one life so all of us are basically agents of karma for each other otherwise if everybody was isolated separated how would the the cause and effect could be brought together that is why since this whole thing is a web of life so if one vibration happens and the vibration has to travel and come back it has to be interconnected it has to be just one thing to you know bring back that same thing and from that point of view if we see 
normally when we use the word karma it seems mostly in the negative sense right do we any time say when you get a lottery or you get a very happy situation do we say why me <laughs> right but only when something bad happens then say, why me right so actually actually it's not true it's only our way of looking even what is good ha is happening nobody is sending to us like okay you did not do your morning prayer so you deserve something some suffering or you did not do this so basically the karma is not the punisher okay karma is not the power that crushes but actually it is a statement of conditions of out of which in uh, variable results will come out but at the same time it also gives us the key that whatever we want to do or become is possible whether we want to become adept whether we want to become a scientist whether we want to become a mathematician artist musician whatever if we work hard we can become that and just like now we have so many children no at the age of 3 4 my god they are they know they are playing violin or at, at a very young age they are play, begin, beginning to play chess and defeating uh, like uh, are no yeah few days i think a month back a 12 year old old boy or from chennai Lady. who defeated the world uh, grand master kasparov or karpo i don't know in the world chess championship or something like that and he became something so how how is this happening i mean we normally say god gifted or talented but from where is it coming okay so from that sense basically karma is impartial it is not punishing us it is not rewarding us what we study in the third great truth that nobody is rewarding us or nobody is punishing us it is us who are deciding what will happen to us the universe is only responding to the vibrations that we are sending so in that sense karma is basically perfect justice with love it is only trying to restore the balance whatever disharmony is created at some place it is trying to harmonize it and it is perfect justice but i would like to emphasize on the last sentence the effect is in such a way that the center evolves and that is karma's love and compassion why it is called law of mercy because it is very ironical or paradoxical that we are calling it law of mercy and it is giving us so much suffering all right because normally mercy means you take someone out of suffering actually that there is a very symbolical story about it that law of karma uh, when he saw the state of humanity in ignorance he became very sad and he cried and i think the same is in bible also and some others and when he cried his tears became various diseases like plague and earth i mean natural calamities and all those things now it is very uh, i mean a strange thing because all these things give suffering to human beings but it is only in suffering that we learn and grow because if everything is going very very smooth very very uh, like royal highway is given to us will we learn something we only learn when some obstacle is placed in front of us then we learn to jump then we learn to raise our capacities right so suffering that is coming in our life is actually not to suppress us but actually to shake awake us and to help us develop more capacity in us and what does the or does tim uh, keep uh, uh, referring to that statement that pain if some pain is the best teacher somebody told someone 
pain is, is the pain best teacher? He said, no, pain is not the best teacher. Pain is the only teacher. Because when pain comes in life or suffering, okay, we'll see later. Pain is gain and all those things. <laughs> yeah. No pain, no gain. So, yeah, so, I mean, we can see, and of so many great people that we read the biographies, we see how much suffering they had before they had some moment of enlightenment or moment of insight or something like that. So, that is the love, and that is why it is called law of mercy. And we can also feel, I mean, suppose if all of us do prayers, right? You see the depth of your prayer from where it is coming when everything is happy. I mean, you know, everything is going good and you are secured, settled and you go to altar and do whatever or something. But now let's say there has come a problem in life. And then what happens? Suddenly that introvertedness comes. And then you go deeper and then when you pray, then you feel that, you know, you are connecting more with that higher self. And the prayer is coming from much deeper from us. And, but I think that's uh, for everybody's uh, personal thing. So that is the reason why karma is often called the law of mercy. And that is the compassion for it, that it wants us to evolve, evolve, evolve. And that's why it is an opportunity and not a fatalism thing that, you know, this, I, this is what I am being given and I have to live it in one way or the other. No. Now coming to types of karma. In Bhagavad Gita, also in uh, question theosophy explained in questions and answers there is a book by p pavari so in that also he has mentioned that the types of karma there is one called prarabdha and then sanchita and then kriyamana so basically prarabdha means the ones that are fructified for this life, this birth that we are going to live. That is of three types. Again, drana means firm, very, very firm, cannot be changed, inevitable. Then there is drana, adrana means semi-firm. Yeah. And then adrana means flexible, which are not yet so concrete uh, that cannot be changed. Then comes the sanchita. Sanchita means the storehouse of all the consequences yet to be ripened and fructified because we have been coming for such a long journey so we have must have created a lot of causes. So a lot of consequences and in one life not all the consequences can be fulfilled or lived. Can be lived also, we will see in, in the couple of slides later when it happens. So that's why some of the store, some from that store is given in this birth as prarabdha. And then comes the kriyaman, means the actions that we are doing now. Basically the reactions, current actions, the seed of causes which in turn will bring their consequences in the future. They are basically our responses or reactions, whatever we want to uh, call them. And that is why if, okay, you are writing, somebody, you are writing? Yes, sir. Sure. So I can move? Yes, you can go. Okay. So, in, re, in relation to those three karmas, if we see, the karma is not something very static. That uh, this is decided for this birth and that is how it is. No. Destiny is not something that is fixed and not alterable. In fact, with each passing second, we are modifying the sum total of our store of total karma. The only thing that matters in this is our approach to face the consequences, the circumstances. 
and I gave the example of that lady, right, who went into past life regression and her relationship with her husband was very bad. But when she realized, she stopped reacting to those things. And what happened? Oh, one year, one and a half year, the relationship completely changed, became harmonious. How it happened? How she changed? By her own efforts, by her own understanding. This also brings us to the fact that yesterday uh, you were saying there are some mantras. You chant them and you, personally for me, as if I am asked, I don't uh, believe in such things because then it is like cheating the law of karma and we see, already saw that there is no possible to cheat in natural laws. What may happen by chanting of the mantra, it may give you some uh, strength, it may give you some understanding, it may give you some wisdom with which when you face the consequence, your reactions will change, your response will change and hence it will change the situation. Maybe that connection is possible that way. But just if we think we keep chanting, chanting, chanting and some of the karma will be destroyed. Uh, I mean, my mind doesn't uh, go very much with that. Uh, maybe uh, if people, everybody is free to try that. that. Like let's say it is called, said the Gayatri Mantra, right? When you chant what happens, we discussed the other day. So when it, you chant, what happens is the light is coming to you. So it is awakening your spiritual intuition and that intuition is helping you to uh, do something which you earlier would not have done or behaved in a different manner. So that knowledge, that wisdom is changing us and hence it is facing the karma in a different manner which subsides it. And uh, what I was going to say. Okay, what was the point we were discussing before? That how the uh, we face when uh, the karma is by the mantra. Okay, if it comes to back to my mind, uh, the only thing that matters is how we face those consequences, and that will affect the our uh, the dynamics. Now, this is the question that is I mean very important that we can karma be changed or ended. So let us keeping the time in our thing, I mean, following how much time we have left. Who is asking this question in me? <laughs> By asking that question, what am I implying? Am I implying the good karma or am I, am I implying the bad karma? Like Vignesh said, selective deletion. <laughs> 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 Because uh, are we really implying I want to end my good karma? So, I mean, my sense says that this question that can karma be changed or ended is actually aimed only for the karma that is unpleasant. So who is asking that in me? The lower aspect of me who is afraid to face the consequences, not the higher aspect. Because higher aspect for that, it does not matter what happens down there. I mean birth, death and disease, whatever happens, it's not of big value. But it since my body, my desire body and my lower mental body is, uh, it's, it wants uh, pleasantries, happiness, joyfulness and all those things. So it is asking, you know, how can I just bypass that thing? And there have been examples of both actually, the cases in which was not changed and in cases it was changed. But for what reasons? In the past lives of L.K. and E.J. Krishnamurti, if we read a book, in one of the past lives, he was accused of killing someone. I mean, J. Krishnamurti in earlier life. And he had a family and people conspired against him and he was caught because he was doing something good for the society and he was put in jail and he was given the punishment of to be hanged till death. Uh, I mean, that was decided. 
so night before or some time before it he was like very anxious that i mean i have not done this am i i am getting punished for it so and and of course it is a very strong feeling of helplessness no if i have done a mistake and i get punished for it at least i know i have done something wrong but if i have not done something wrong and i am getting punished for it it is very rebellious feeling that so then master came in his vision and then he says you have to undergo this because of some past karma we cannot change the situation but we can give you the spiritual power to face it in a calm way and do not worry after you go you will be proven uh non guilty and your family will be taken care of and the work that you were working for will be continued and what happened he was given the punishment but after that vision he was completely calm accepted that okay courageous endurance of personal injustice and then it was done and after a few days what happened that in the charge of killing the person in which he was caught that person was found alive so i mean what big proof of non guilty of a person who <laughs> so when that came to notice then i mean every the okay so that that person who jay krishna murthy was relieved of all the uh, blames and his family was taken by the care of the government and i mean government of those days whatever it was the king or something and then uh, his uh, project or social work continued so that was one example in this life i mean in recent times we see hp blavatsky when she was about to write secret doctrine she was very very ill and she was while she was writing and it was her time of death but then master asked her would you like to continue and finish the book or would you like to leave the body now if you leave, because of so much pain she was having in the body that unbearable pain and they said if you continue to finish the book then you will have to face the pain until you leave the body she chooses to finish the book in spite of the pain so it means again depending on how i am living my life now how much useful i am for the society now even some of the things can be modified but again there will be a higher magic we are saying higher magic like aslan got back to life but there may be still higher law that in such cases that the person is doing such a selfless sacrificial job for the greater good of humanity that he or she may be given some extension or some sh- similarly happens to it there is a saying in hindi paap ka ghada bharna like there is earthen pot right i was discussing yesterday uh, in which water is kept to uh, cool so it says sin the sin, the earthen pot of full of sin so they say that once your pot is full then you die so i am doing one sin a day or something uh, one sin a year or something so it is slowly slowly filling up but suppose i go in the direction that i become i mean wholesale uh, sins every day every hour and everything what will happen it will fill very quickly and so maybe if the death time was much later i will invite it much earlier so everything depends how i am living my life right now and so that depends on our my approach pain is inevitable like j krishna murthy or hpv they had pain had to face the pain but suffering is a choice self inflicted suffering that we create that maybe one person if little bit cut is there it will be like oh i have to go to doctor or take me to the doctor or something i am having pain and for other person maybe a fracture happens and he like ah oh, okay <laughs> let's have some coffee and tea and then go to the hospital or something like that <laughs> so it all 
Suffering is our own choice. And suffering, why does it happen? Due to ignorance. The ignorance of what? Ignorance of oneness of life ultimately, non-duality. That whenever we think of ourselves as separate, which is the root cause of every suffering, that I am this body, I am my desires, I am my positions and everything. So anything that gets hurt, I feel suffering. But if I see that everything is one, there is no duality, so nothing can be taken from me. And that is why, as far as my understanding says in this matter, that the only modification that can happen uh, is dependent upon our current attitude to face it and our realization of oneness, love and compassion, which is the purpose of law of karma, that it wants us to evolve. Evolve means let go of ignorance. And that is how we are continuously out of Sanchita Karma. We get the prarabh, we do our reactions to situations or responses as Kriyaman Karma, and we keep adding this, and then next birth again and again and again, and this go on. So, how to cut off and face that karma? I think we all have studied these things. So, more than this, I will take you to one the direct statements from the masters in at the feet of the master. We must bear our karma cheerfully, whatever it may be, taking it as an honor that suffering comes to you because it shows that the lords of karma think you are worth helping. So that is the kind of attitude we should have that it is uh, suffering is coming to us means it is the compassion of lords of karma that is coming to me because they want me to evolve however hard it is be thankful that it is no worse remember that you are of but little use to the master until your evil karma is worked out and you are free and i know one person a theosophist and he used to I heard about him I have never met him in person but I heard him through another uh, theosophist he used to go around places and give lectures and you know talks and uh, just like conducting his study camps and all those things and help people then he had an accident and in that accident his legs were cut off which is a very very I mean, unfortunate thing, but when people went to meet him, he was like, I mean, person is going to meet him like he will be very depressed. And he said, no, no, until now, I was doing the work, traveling around and everything. Now the masters have given me the opportunity to use my thought power. I mean, that kind of positivity, that kind of approach, that no matter how hard it is, be thankful that it is no worse half full, half empty glass. I mean, we all know how to look at the glass. So that kind of depth that we, when we get, then no situation in life can ever depress us. This is what we were just discussing, that so many lives or births are needed to fructify all this store of karma. But by offering yourself to him, you have asked that your karma may be hurried. And so now in one or two lives, you work through that, what otherwise might have been spread over a hundred births. But in order to make the best out of it, you must bear it cheerfully, gladly. So you see, that is the dynamics of karma. It's not very fixed that this is given in one life and then next life. The moment we say that we, I want to walk the spiritual path, I want to know the truth, I want to you know, know the reality, it is actually an invitation to the nature and out of compassion the more and more karma which would have come later in the life would come start coming now like we took the example of loan and emi like if we are deciding 10 years of payment of emi monthly installments it will be small small 
but if i choose that i want to settle my loan in one year so i have to pay big amounts of money to the bank to finish the loan and so that is why sometimes you we see that good person suffer more because good person means a person who is trying to walk this path whether attached to any organization or not that's not important but basically within and so more and more karma is coming either good and bad so what happens if you see the lives of such people you will find a lot of events happen in this suddenly something will happen here some they will lose something they will get something i mean a lot of things will start happening so if that happens it means our request our application of uh, to lots of karma has been sanctioned, sanctioned or accepted and <laughs> approved <laughs> yes and they have taught us to be capable enough to you know work it out and you must give up all feeling of possession karma may take from you the things which you like best even the people whom you love most even then you must be cheerful ready to part with anything and everything i mean i know that sounds like a very strong thing to do sorry very painful and painful of course because of this all feeling of possession and attachment but we are humans and we are all in the same boat we are students and in our own way we are trying to work upon our attachments our sense of possessiveness so but those are the ideals that we read the master also teaches that it does not matter in the least what happens to a human being from the outside <coughs> sorrows trouble sickness losses all these must be as nothing to him or her and must not be allowed to affect the calmness of his mind they are the result of past actions and when they come you must bear them cheerfully remembering that all evil is transitory and your duty is to remain always joyous and serene they belong to your previous lives not to this you cannot alter them so it is useless to trouble about them i mean such a strong statement it almost sounds like very cruel like we are caught up in our you know life uh, with trouble sickness and relationships and everything and master is telling us you know they don't mean anything Huh? Very nice to have a person who is yes, who is experiencing that? But again, I mean that's why the spiritual path is called the razor's edge. Walking on the razor's edge, that you have to be. We have to be all the time aware and uh, you know attentive to what's going on outside and inside. So if we read this, ninety-nine percent of the things that we worry about. are actually gone so that is how if we face the karma we can put an end to it of our consequences but can karma be transcended that we will discuss at the end not of the end of this session but better we will discuss in the end of start of the next session because i think it's tea time right and but okay it's still 2 minutes i can still get two slides <laughs> so so that we have less for the next session uh so now we have seen everything about karma is you know what happens how it happens but how is karma made the ingredients of karma are action desire and thought and desire and thought together also form motive because motive is very important in forming of the karma why that work was done how does the thought make the karma because repeated thoughts become our character as is our character we react to the situations means create the causes the as we create the causes it will bring their consequences so as simple as that because destiny depends on character then our desire desire is the motive power and 
it is said that when we desire something the moment we desire something it starts bringing that thing towards us the universe cons not conspires is basically the law that the moment we start desiring something it comes to us start coming to us and the only difference the only time lag that we have in desiring and receiving is the intensity of desire yeah or the intensity of the will there is difference in will and desire will is the aspect of monad desire is at the is a reflection of will at personal level at astral plane this which includes selfish i mean for me the higher aspect is called will or aspiration so magnetic tie draws one towards careful so we have to be very careful of what we desire because nobody knows if it gets fulfilled so the moment it gets fulfilled we don't know what because when we desired it it looked very beautiful but now when we are receiving it we have already grown past that thing so it will seem not enough and we will be caught up in this cycle so desire the things that are righteous pure good and uplifting and physical actions that is the actions that we do in put in practice create our environment our conditions and circumstances like where we will take birth in what environment we will take birth our neighbors friends enemies or whatever similarly if we have inflicted extreme cruelty on the helpless it will become as some kind of physical deformity and the same thing applies to mental also more or less how much the person did will come back as in this life and about motive we will talk about after the tea thank you for your patience and concentration 